What so uh, during that during that time frame um, before we kind of roll into a, a little bit, I, I want to talk to you about some stories that are involved with it. But I I do want to start off with some kind of groundwork as far as like what based off my research of you and listening to you talk and stuff before you're, you're very big on terrain and terrain features. And it sounded like you had learned a lot of that from your, your father and yeah. kind of explain that to you. So explain to the audience a little bit about terrain and kind of what that means to you. Well, uh, so in these, these mountains that I hunt, there's a lot of, you have really uh, dramatic, what I call dramatic terrain features where, you have like a major drainage and then you have major draws that go up to ridges and stuff like that. What I'm keying in on is secondary ditches is what I call them secondary. And it may not be, but a like a, you know, 10 or 15 foot dip, you know, that leads up there. It seems like to me that the more mature deer, especially they like to use those terrain features when they're crossing a ridge. So, it's just a minimal, just a minimal change in the terrain. It's not nothing major, not nothing drastic. It's just a minimal drop in elevation. Uh, it's hard to explain. I, I call them ditches, but it's not, somebody might think of a ditch as being like this, but it might be more of like a U shape and it might be yep. just faint. It might be just faint and nobody, you know, somebody might walk right past it and not even really notice it's there. You have to really be looking but the deer know they're there, and, and it gets them down in a little bit of a dip, and they like to travel those things crossing these ridges. Yeah, and you know, I'm glad I'm glad you said that because when I first listened to you talk about that, I was I was picturing some of these, and I'm sure it can be at some point, but really steep, you know, almost like straight cliff drop as far as these ditches that come up that you can find in some of the steep stuff, and then kind of where it levels off a little bit at the top. But I think that's a really good point because even people in places that aren't or that aren't hunting, you know, ridiculously steep terrain, these little these ditches are are available. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, if you could just picture a really steep ditch, and you're walking along the edge of it, and and there's just like a little break in the side of it where there's just a little slight like a roadside ditch going up the side of it. Those are the type areas that I'm looking for. I do hunt some steep ground, but those little subtle changes like that right there, I know it's hard to picture, but yeah, it's hard to describe, but it's just little subtle changes that I'm looking for. Yeah, no, I, I think you're describing it pretty well because like there, and, and it's obviously it's, it's a lot easier to identify when you're looking at very steep terrain because yeah. it shows up really easily on the map. You can see it, you can turn on your slope angle shading and you can like really, you know, fine tune those, those areas. But even in like relatively flat, some of the big woods that I hunt doesn't have, you know, might only have a couple hundred feet elevation change mm -hmm. in between different areas. And you can find some of those little tiny dips that are, that yeah. are in there too. And, and for the the bucks like to travel yeah it's yeah it's not much of a of a change and and you're not going to see it on a map it's going to take boots on the ground to find some of these places and i feel like after years of hunting in the ozarks like that and and realizing some of these little travel routes and stuff that it's also helped me in the midwest out there just a little bit of a change it doesn't take much it's just like a magnet for those deer and they they use it yeah, because you yeah. yeah you hunt you hunt Kansas a lot too, and which is like completely different as far as looking at the terrain goes for where you're hunting in the Ozarks. Yeah, it's a lot different, but I use kind of the same philosophy on on the terrain change. Uh, you know, there's there's where we go is in northeast Kansas, and it's kind of a rolling hills, but uh, you there's also a lot of flat ground, and just any little change like a dr little drainage or you know, anything like that makes a huge difference in these travel routes. Yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. I mean, even thinking about it, like you, you can take the same philosophies, like when deer are bedding, you know, when 
deer, you, you think about it typically in, in the mountains, you know, the deer like to have a good visual and some cover. Sometimes it might be a little knob that they're on. Mm-hmm. You can take that to a flat swamp and it's like, they're going to find that higher ground where they can see and, and, and have the, the cover available and everything there. So that, that's, I that's think it good all that you mean, it's good that you mentioned that because in these little, uh, these changes in the, uh, the feature, it also, the vegetation changes with it. And sometimes there might be different kinds of trees in that also. I mean, everything changes, not not just the elevation, but maybe some vegetation or whatever, you know, is growing in there that is not normally on the other part. Do you think, does, does that come from, you know, moisture as far as like maybe that being a little bit of a catch basin for, you know, I not saying maybe, it's like a swamp, but, you know, just having know, a little bit more moisture? Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Now, Now that you mentioned that, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I just just curious about, uh, you know, about how that wh- why that is, because I, you know, we see it, too. And again, I'm halfway across the country from you, but we see the similar types of thing in those areas. And I've actually found like even in those places, bucks will bed in some of those spots like the, like I, I'm thinking of an example in my head right now of a, one of those ditch areas that has some blowdowns in it. And it's like in September and early October, I can bet that I'm going to jump a buck in there if I go walking right. through it. And it's just, right. it just, blowdowns are huge. Blowdowns <laughs> yeah. are huge. <laughs> yeah. Not only does it uh, create a good spot from the bed, it also creates a, uh, like a gap or it might close off a big area and they go around it. You know what I'm talking about? They might go yeah. around. It forces them in a certain, it forces them to cross at a certain spot. Yeah, I, I key in on blowdowns quite a bit. Yeah, I find, no, I find it, a lot of sheds and blowdowns too. 